Well, what a great pleasure it is to welcome, and no stranger to what's next, Julian Liebenberg. And uh, Julian is the chief of Cloud Platform Solutions at BCX. Uh, and we've got big news to talk about. Julian, welcome, and uh, I hope that you are well. Yeah, I'm outstanding. Couldn't be better. We made a big announcement. Uh, I can tell you I haven't been bored for a couple of days, so it's really good, yeah. Well, listen, uh, you tell us a bit about this announcement because it's pretty massive. You recently announced a partnership with Alibaba Cloud. And, um, I mean, what, what does this all involve and wh what does this actually mean for BCX? Hmm. So, very nice. It's an exclusive partnership deal uh, for South Africa and um, a sort of preferred partner arrangement for the rest of Africa. So, what it means is customers who would like to use the um, Alibaba infrastructure in their cloud strategy, they would either through their preferred reseller or directly deal with BCX in one shape or other. So we're very excited to be developing a partner ecosystem with and for Alibaba. So there's a lot of participants uh, that can uh, benefit uh, from this ecosystem. It's not just the end customers. There's, of course, um, independent software vendors, implementation partners, and so forth. And we might be talking about it, but uh, we've seen studies how the economy of this just creates more jobs and creates more uh, revenue. Uh, yes. for the country so it's a, it's a you know it's a big opportunity for alibaba they wanted to enter the african uh, market big opportunity for us we wanted to scale our cloud capability and i think the opportunity for south africa is we we can potentially create some very interesting um, jobs well, listen, I mean, that is absolutely superb. We know how big Alibaba is um, as a business and their cloud is in, in, enormous. But let's just take a step back because, you know, the last two and a half years with COVID have certainly taught us a lot about uh, cloud computing. And we know how it's just transforming businesses, right? If you're not, uh, if your journey is not part of the journey to the cloud, you are going to be left behind. It's a very, very important technology. So just tell us why cloud computing is so important? Hmm. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about cloud computing since, oh goodness, it now sounds forever. I think it was the 2008s when the concept came forward. Uh, and the way we thought about it originally, it's still there. You know, it's this um, elastic computing power, which you can scale up, scale down, consume on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, so it's, it's really easy to provision as opposed to the traditional model of buying equipment for a capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. So that's all still there. But what we are looking at here is really what we term hyperscalers. So this is where it just it's just at a completely different scale. Now you've got thousands of computers participating in this cloud environment uh, and your particular workload, uh, maybe your financial system, connects to this cloud environment. So it would just send the workload to the least busy of the servers. So you're not computing on one piece of resource. You can compute on one or multiple or thousands. So, and that's beautiful because customers can double their capacity overnight. When is it needed? Well, perhaps Black Friday. You know, if you think the traditional retailer, they trade on that particular day or period. Yes. It's easily double profitable than any other normal period. So that's really what it brings to the market, to this hyperscale. But uh, there's a reason why Alibaba was more interesting for us, and that is that we, we aim to solve customer problems. So we often get involved with customers in conversations. They've got a given problem, and how do we find a solution? This is an interesting part of Alibaba, where they've got what they term uh, industry solutions. So it's obviously, uh, we can call them applications, but why I talk more about a solution is with that given application, let's call it uh, fraud prevention. With that application, they bring a, go, a global best practice. It's built into the application. Mm -hmm. So you're not just buying the application the best practice and the know-how uh, because they also do it for themselves and a number number of other customers so there's a suite of about 200 of these industry solutions and each of the solutions you know it's comprehensive it's complete 
but our customers can still consume a module at a time. Uh, so when we talk fraud prevention, you know, that's not the whole suite. It's a module of a right. subset of something else. So customers can still use the normal trading environment and then uh, augment or supplement it with something in these industry solutions. So, yeah, it, it, it does come uh, and offer a, a fix to some customer problems. And of course, you know, you've got, uh, and what, what you, it's so true what you say, you know, how scalable cloud computing is, right? And the access to that kind of power, I mean, most people, most small businesses, medium-sized businesses, you know, you don't have that on-prem, you know, so now you've got access to this and you can scale as much as your business needs. Um, when you talk about the partner ecosystem, how important is this partner ecosystem in, in the cloud environment? Yeah, very important. So, uh, so for example, if I can quote a recent study that IDC, IDC did specifically for Salesforce.com. So just as a reminder, Salesforce.com is a cloud-based CRM solution. It's not the only one. Uh, it's certainly not even representative of the total cloud industry. So, and I say that because when you hear the numbers that IDC shared, so um, in that report, uh, Salesforce.com is reporting that in South Africa, they will be between the year 2020, which has already started, of course, and 2020, uh, 2024, they will create 5,200 new jobs. Wow. Now, this is not employees of Salesforce.com, it's employees in that partner ecosystem. At the same time, they will generate an addi additional 30 billion rand revenue for that partner ecosystem. So uh, you can literally see this as 30 billion rand additional GDP for South Africa. So you can see how just one provider playing in a small field, that ecosystem evolves. So the participants in that ecosystem adds all different kinds of value. Mm. So in the Alibaba case, it would include ISVs, that uh, independent software vendors that create applications such as maybe a CRM solution. But it goes further. Specialist players here will play a space of maybe big data analytics. So they contract with the customer in a different way and they provide the customer with insights uh, of what's happening in that environment. And keep in mind, um, a, a cloud play player such as Alibaba, everything is built with machine learning and AI from the ground up. They just couldn't see themselves scaling up to where they are uh, if they didn't start off with AI and machine learning built in. So we tend to think it's just compute power, but the rest is still there. And this is what's accessed by this um, ecosystem of partners. Fascinating, fascinating. Now, when you look at the, the impact, uh, what, what impact with, with, uh, will the increased use of cloud computing have, for example, on, uh, on the economy? Because we know that as soon as you start scaling and the student, as soon as start businesses becoming more agile in the cloud, it adds more value to the economy. What are you seeing? And in particular, local employment, and we know the employment numbers and what they're sitting at and, and our economy, it does need that injection. So can cloud computing provide that solution? Uh, goodness, it, it, it can't possibly <laughs> be the solution to it all. Yes. But it certainly, it helps. It helps a lot because any customer on a journey of automation or uh, digital transformation, uh, you know, whether they ref approach it from a 4IR perspective or uh, a pure digital transformation perspective, at some point, the IT environment needs to scale with them. So, and this is the beauty of um, um, a hyperscaler, that that infrastructure is available. It's about available instantly. You don't need to phone anybody and say, get ready for me, I'm gonna do something big. It's there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the nice thing about that is it encourages big enterprises to, um, to play a little at low levels of investment. They can literally test. If we take this application, which maybe runs millions of transactions a day, and we do it this way, will it work? So you can test it in the cloud environment. And that's also why it's important to start thinking cloud native. Let's maybe unpack that in a moment. But uh, they can absolutely 
begin to test this new application and if it works, they say, all right, now let's scale it up. So you can see that development stage taking maybe three months, maybe a year, and then scale it up, switch on more processing power. Yes. So what I'm saying is the ability for big business to become agile is just absolutely there. There's no longer an excuse to say, let's wait for something. Yeah. And I think this will hit, um, and, and it's already in play, but businesses will um, accelerate this transformation, digital transformation, that will definitely accelerate. So, and like I mentioned, although uh, cloud itself is big business, it represents uh, currently a 30 billion um, annual turnover in South Africa, annual revenue. So it's, it's, it's a big business. Um, and that is still set at like a 30% growth rate. You know? mm, so mm. A year on, it, it should grow quite significantly. Obviously, that's why we're interested to um, participate more strongly. Um, but as it enables businesses, it just creates a more competitive environment for businesses in South Africa to compete globally or to service the customers better. So, so, so that's you, a good point. Want to touch on the, yeah, but yeah. I mean, Julian, just to your point there, I mean, w when you say that it enables and unlocks value, so it, it opens other business opportunities. So you therefore employ more people. I mean, you know, we, we were having this discussion a while back about, you know, e-commerce, for example, during lockdown, how many people moved a lot of their, uh, you know, their, their applications into the cloud and it enabled their business to do a lot more than they were doing before. So that created more job opportunities. Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, realistically, uh, it does threaten mundane task workers. Yes. There's no doubt about it, because there's a lot of automation involved. So you could create a lot more mundane task workers by, let's say, automating without the smartness. You know, business is scaling out, employing more people. But automatically, they're not that competitive. And I'm not even saying from a cost perspective. It's from an agility perspective. It takes a lot longer. Whereas the job creation year, if, if you imagine just salesforce.com, and, yes. and most of us don't even use, but just salesforce.com, in a small period of time, 5,200 new jobs. But those jobs are high-end kind of skilled worker jobs. And that's exactly what we actually need in the economy. So for IR in this context does not mean job shedding. It actually means um, uplifting jobs, getting getting to create um, a more value adding kind of a job spectrum. Yes. So, and that becomes, I think businesses that embrace it will certainly see uh, their own growth numbers. There, there's an interesting, no, uh, let's not go, but companies, um, when we survey companies and we ask, do you use cloud, don't you use cloud, and did you grow? We find 58% of companies showing strong growth have adopted cloud. You know, so there's there is a bit of a correlation between mm. good growth and cloud adoption. That's so interesting. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier that you've seen the evolution of the cloud over the years, and you know, the cloud is nothing new. It's been around for you know over two decades, but it's it certainly matured and it's just changed its form in many different ways. Um, and I bet you've seen some interesting things over time, but what trends are you seeing in the cloud market right now? You mentioned how big it is here. I think a, a number of 30 billion you mentioned, but where, where do you see this going, Julian, in the next few years locally and across the continent? Mm. The, the big change for us is the, the, there's two parts to it. Firstly, customers become more comfortable with adopting cloud. And it's really, uh, we've gone beyond the hype. Uh, in those first couple of years, uh, the first two decades, uh, customers would adopt cloud uh, because it's a hype. Uh, you know, everybody else is doing it. We feel under pressure, we've got to go there. But uh, what we find now is customers are doing the right thing. They're saying, how does it add value to my business? And they hold their service providers accountable to that. They, they say, that's how it will add uh, value, and they go for that. So that's a big plus point. But now what it means is customers now apply their mind to this particular decision. Now you sort of 
uh, you know, you're going to commit towards something. You, you, you're going to commit towards a cloud platform. Now we have to ask, hmm, should we go private cloud or public cloud? If I go, just by example, public cloud, I'm going to go, should I go AWS or Alibaba? What should I do? So uh, applying your mind in what you choose also sort of puts you in a corner where you say, I've got to make the perfect choice. And that's where we see a new trend evolving. And we refer to this trend as hybrid multi-cloud, where the customer does not need to make a singular decision. So he can still choose the best, but it's not one, one cloud that's mm. the best. The customer can choose private cloud for certain workloads that really isn't suited to a hyperscale environment. Then he can choose one hyperscaler that's perhaps very good with um, the backup and recovery another hyperscaler for compute power and another one for data analytics so that environment we would refer to hybrid being private and public cloud and multi-cloud so one workload can run across uh, these multiple environments it becomes very complex to manage but thankfully there's people and tools and services that can help with that so yeah. best managing your cost and the benefit you get from that cloud environment. So interesting. Uh, I mean, and, and it, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in what you're saying, you know, and there's different solutions. And I think competition is great. And it's wonderful that, you know, you can see this evolving, you know, this this multi-cloud environment that we're talking about and everybody working in a, in, in, in hybrid form uh, in many cases. So it's, it's quite interesting to see the evolution. And I've no doubt that we will see even more evolution going forward. But uh, Julian Liebenberg, uh, Chief of Cloud Platform Solutions at BCX, Thank you for joining me and a uh, big congratulations to you and your team on, on, on uh, you know, this Alibaba cloud uh, coming on board to BCX. I think it's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic announcement. Thank you, Aki. Thank you.